Good day and welcome to this first segment of A Week at the Plot, a Tuesday segment of A Week at the Plot. We were away in Guernsey for a few days seeing mum and we also managed to get over to the island of Herm which was absolutely glorious. The peace and tranquility of the island of Herm is quite amazing. It really is and the, the views from the path that circumnavigates the island is just stunning and the island is stunning itself though very very dry I've never seen it quite so dry and of course that continues to be the sort of name of the game here at the plot it, even though we've had some rain the rain that we have had has done very very little and I asked various plot holders to water things so one a set of plot holders were doing beans Another was doing squash or two others were doing squash and cucumbers and my plot neighbours just next door here were doing um, tomatoes and the polytunnel which um, it, you know was fantastic to be able to call on those people and not just give it not just ask just one person. There were certain things that I said do not worry about watering um, the brassicas, the uh, soft fruit beds things like that I just really wanted people to concentrate on what you know was going to hopefully be producing for us this year and as I came here I kept my eyes low and I didn't really look and we're going to go back to the corner of the plot now and I'm going to do a quick walk around with you and see what we see and I genuinely haven't looked um, I just came up here came in the shed doing this piece now and we'll go out and let's start filming so let's get to the corner of the plot I did keep my eyes down when I came to the plot mainly because I want to see it with you but I did notice down here that as I came around the corner there was a plop as a frog moved in that pond so I think frogs have taken residence up in that pond and I also noticed these cardoons look at them they're just spectacular but yes I can see that things have been watered these golden gate beans are still growing well people have been picking which is great that's sort of coming up to near ripeness there's a bit of green here but um, it'll all go to this buttery yellow so yeah they've been picked and cared for which is lovely Madeira maroon oh yeah they're they're do they're really doing well plenty of beans forming on there now the Either marjoram or um, oregano has gone over now. That does need a good water. I obviously told people not to water this. They were sort of concentrating on certain things. There's a little butterfly there. Oh, look at it. Gatekeeper, I think that one was. Anyway, coming around here, all these beans are doing fine. These are the ones we put in, I don't know, 10 days ago. Runner beans, good amount to pick there. Oh, and look, look at this. There's dark purple stalk and green stalk. Look at that, that's interesting. That's, oh, there's one here as well, look. Dark purple, green. There's one up there as well. I'm completely intrigued by these. Shaz's black scarlet emperor runner beans. But yeah, all of those have been watered and cared for and picked, which is great. These do need a water. I said to people not to worry too much about the brassicas because uh, they didn't need as much water at the moment in their growing. So that's okay. I'll give those a really good water tomorrow morning. Lots of 
Callaloo coming here with its, um, this is like tree spinach, rather lovely. And these have started, this one was running already, trailing, but I think, I think this one's beginning to trail now as well. Oh yeah, look, there's one coming out really sort of slow I'd expect these to really oh, I was going to say have flowers on them there has been a flower on that one but no squash behind it so I think that was a male flower but yeah clearly these have been watered as well tomatoes I know has been watered Tomato care is needed, more tying in, more taking side shoots off, like there. Yeah, fruits forming, but not a, not a great year. <laughs> Do I say that every year now? I'm not sure. The lavender, now it's a great year for lavender. Absolutely. The bees are loving it. Beetroot, need to harvest quite a few there. There's one here, one or two here, that are shooting out of the ground. They're sort of cylindrical. They shouldn't be, but they are. Potatoes under there. Oh, I potted up a passion fruit from when we had our shed done. And that has really put on growth. Look at that, it's fantastic. It was literally just, can you see in here, just the sort of twig bit? That twig bit. It had root on it, but that's doing well. This is also doing well. Can't remember what this is, but it comes up as a sort of variegated leaf and lovely spikes of flower. Yeah. Clearly we haven't had a lot of rain because everything is still so dry. So, so dry. Hey ho. Need to water the soft fruit bed. I think this has really suffered in that heat. Look, this has just died right back now. Look at that. Yeah, so I think what I'll do cut my losses cut all of the trailing bits back and then these can come another year yeah soft fruits need a water again I told people not to concentrate on those Guernsey tomatoes yeah they're beginning to form yeah I'm going to be talking about Guernsey tomatoes and Guernsey Island tomatoes at some point. Interesting thing I found out whilst in Guernsey. These tomatoes are sort of doing okay. That one certainly needs tying up. Yeah, not a lot of fruit forming. These are doing particularly poorly. I think these are our red ox heart and not really doing great. Hey ho. Um, oh, courgettes beginning to form on this courgette. Oh, look. Cucumbers. I said to people, for people to pick, but look wow another one forming in there Vivi's cucumbers doing well for us clearly in there over there oh in there oh and I think a giant one by the looks of it in there look at that I don't think people have picked the cucumbers Courgette, great. And that 
Oregon Homestead Sweet Meat, which is this one, is really sort of trailing well. So dry though, so, so dry. Two spare beds, two spare beds. Yeah. And in fact, I'm noticing the apple tree is so dry as well. It's fruit, it's overladen. Sorry, you can't see, but it's overladen. It's just too, too dry. And then let's have a quick look into the poly. Oh, yeah, all's been watered and looking good. All those lettuce are looking good. Coriander over there. And these will be going into spare beds. I know we had some roots coming out. These are tomato cuttings that we had. Yeah, they could do with a... Yeah, there's roots coming out, you can see. They, um, they're all good. So I will give that all a water. So actually, very thankful to one, two, three, four, five, six plot neighbors for watering. It's um, the things that needed watering uh, have been watered. And to be fair, that's exactly what I expected from the, the people that I asked. So we're just very fortunate here. Let me pop back in the shed. Well, I am really thankful for the plot holders who have been down here watering. So I allotted, well, I asked and then allotted certain jobs to certain of the, the people that I asked. So anyone who said, yes, I do have the time or yes, I'm, I'm not away myself. Um, one plot holder, two people on one plot were watering the beans and the squash and the cucumbers that was two separate plot holders who said we'll we'll come and fill up the bottles and of course they have done that my lovely plot neighbors opposite with the chickens have done all of the tomatoes and um, they've also done the polytunnel and a few other things so really am thankful for the work that they have put in whilst we've been away seeing mum um, on our plot and of course I would happily reciprocate that and do you know not just to those people but to others that may be away um, throughout the year as well you know we yeah we have a good community of people who are willing to step up and say oh I'll water your your plot once twice three times for a fortnight you know whatever and actually everything is doing okay it's not a spectacular year at the plot, it has to be said. Vivi's cucumbers are doing fantastically. So got to be happy for that. Where is the one that I've just... Oh, why did I put it up there? That's the one I've just picked. So it's because of my head. So, um, yeah, so we'll be having that later. I might actually put it with some Bragg's organic cider vinegar and just marinate it a bit we do like our cucumbers like that and we also like them just you know sliced as a as part of a salad but yeah just pleased to be back at the plot because you know even when you know you can rely on people and you're away you still have at the back of your mind oh i wonder whether it's rained oh i wonder whether you know they've had time to do the watering oh this oh that you know but um yeah all good and the bits that I knew you know I said don't need to be watered yeah you know they're in the state that I I thought that they would be but we really really do need rain and in fact I will put a link here to the July a Guernsey Gardener in London piece that I did for the Guernsey Press because it talks about the heat wave that we've just had and the one that we had in 1976 it talks about Guernsey tomatoes and the tomatoes that we're growing here, trying to grow here this year. Um, 
I mean, of course, this year's crop at the moment is far better than last year because last year we were bitten by blight. So anything that, that actually comes to fruition or anything that actually grows before blight potentially sets in is a bonus this year because we had none last year. But yeah, I've, um, I've got a day with Vanessa tomorrow. Uh, so I will be back here on Thursday. I'm really delighted that the uh, passion flower and the passion flute, uh, fruit, flute, passion flute, um, passion flower that I potted up has started growing really, really well. That will be a plant that we will take to our next home. And also because this was the last time being at mum's apartment before it is sold I also took some cuttings and a few plants from the patio there and I think we'll see if we can talk a little bit about those uh, later in the week um, but some plants to remind me of mum and dad and their apartment um, at 2G Richmond Court as it was in Guernsey so yeah we'll talk a bit more about that in sunday chat and of course mum is is fine you know she's settling into her care home quite well um and is content i think it's fair to say right this has gone on for far too long longer than i had anticipated see you again soon bye good day and welcome to this Thursday segment of A Week at the Plot. Not done very much so far. I've done a little bit of watering. I have also topped up all of the ponds, particularly the above ground pond just on this polytunnel side of the plot, because I think something, maybe even a hedgehog, had got in there, displaced some of the water, and the hedgehog has got out. There's no hedgehog in there, there's just frogs. Um, because the water level had really sunk since I was down here a couple of days ago and I think that's just because something has either drunk an awful lot or something has gone in there and displaced the water so I topped that up fully the underground or the below ground pond next to it I've also topped that up but just with a couple of inches of water because the frogs seem to like that water in there quite shallow and then at the front, when I came with the new pond, there was a, a frog basking in the sun next to the brick. So I know that that is inhabited now by frogs. So, you know, that's the point and that's absolutely lovely. Yesterday, I spent a very long day at Vanessa uh, for her sake. And I'll just fly in here on YouTube a shot of the Heritage Orchard. We were doing quite a bit of work yesterday. I got down there, I leave here about eight, I get down there about half nine. We do sort of 10 hours of work and then I come back. So in the middle of the afternoon, we had a break. We had some lunch outside in her garden, which was lovely. And then we went across and we carried on talking about work but we were watering the trees of the Heritage Orchard, which was lovely. And in that shot, she's talking to one of the carpenters that is renovating one of her barns. So, yeah, that was a, an absolutely lovely day yesterday and a work day. You know, I'm lucky to, to have great work like that. That's enjoyable. And another thing that is going to be enjoyable is me putting certain things up. A bag of things a bag of plants so these are our plants that I took from mum's patio mum and dad's patio dad of course has not been with us for six years now he died just over six years ago and mum has been tending these plants um, with the help of my brother as well and um, for many years but in there is some pinks, which are like small carnations. And mum has been tending those for absolutely decades. <clears throat> Several incarnations of them, no pun intended. Um, so these were given to mum very, very early on in mum's marriage. So they were, I remember them at Martindale. Then they moved to our next house, which was Le Pignon. Then, you know, they were placed around different borders, but a pot then left there to go to Vals-en-Bay Apartments where 
Mum, Dad and I were staying until Bas Marie was built. Then they went to Bas Marie, then a pot, then they were spread across Bas Marie, the land there. And then a pot was taken from Bas Marie to 2G Richmond Court, which is where Mum and Dad lived for the, well, the last 20 years of Mum's life and the last 14 of Dad's. And um, yeah, so there's a long history there. So now those pinks have moved decades over to London, where I am now at the moment. So I'm just going to be potting those things up. Um, some of the geraniums in there have got a plug plants. They're not that old, maybe four or five years old, but they're plug plants, which I'm going to um, plant up. And I'm also going to take cuttings from them. And you've seen how Vivi has done cuttings in water. I just do my cuttings of geraniums into compost with hormone rooting powder, as I do with most of our cuttings that you've seen before. So I'm just going to get on and do that. And then I'll show you what I have done when I've done it. At the front here, we've got the pinks which are looking a bit worse for wear, but I'm confident they'll come back. And then cuttings of geraniums. I think there's three different types of geraniums we've got cuttings from. Two geraniums that were plug plants that I cut right back and obviously took the cuttings from. Then here we've got hot and tot fig, which is a succulent, which grows in Guernsey really, really well. I've just literally pressed that into the very surface of the soil. You can see I'm trying to propagate some here by taking the individual leaves off and popping them on the soil. And then there are further cuttings of a different type of geranium. And those are our tomato cuttings that we took a few weeks ago, which will be going out this week, I think. So yeah, these are cuttings which I hope will, well cuttings and plants, which I hope will do okay over the coming months. And we will see how they do. What I am going to do now, of course, is give them a really good water. The tomatoes at the back are actually sitting in a little bit of water because I know that they quite like that at this stage. But these here, I'm going to be watering. Let me just pull this over. I've got my trusty squirter. I'm just going to be squirting them like that. I'll most probably do this twice today because they have just gone in. Right, I'm going to carry on with those, but we will leave it there. See you again soon. Bye. Good day. I've been doing tomato cares. Hadn't done any since the Wednesday before we went away. So that's like 10 days. So there was quite a lot to do. And so I've taken out side shoots tied these up these are all black crim and these are cordons so actually they should just be growing on one stalk but in the center here these are also black crim and look at the fruit on that here again you see those three decent fruit on there and plenty to come so actually what I've done is I've left these two bush, these black crim three here to bush. And then I've cut them back. So you can see here, uh, hopefully this has come up, this side shoot. And I've cut it off, the flowers here, coming off here, and I've cut it off here. And I've done that with all of these I have to say they are doing better than the rest like this one you know that's a single stalk on there 
but the black cream are by far doing the best of the tomatoes we've got our Amish paste here um, you can see more of the shape if I can come in on these more of the egg shape on those well look at that one you can see that one there um, my California weave that I was doing hasn't quite worked I'm gonna have to find some more stakes but that's okay then over here we've got Brad's atomic grape which are sort of forming to be honest I don't know when they're a variety I haven't grown before and I don't know when they're ripe I assume they will change colour I need to look them up but I know that some can stay green so there's another Brad Atomic grape there and there but yeah having a mix up on the names of the tomatoes didn't really help this year but we do have fruits forming now though it feels so late in the season it really does we are normally eating ripe fruit by this time of year and then coming up here these are where most of our Guernsey tomatoes are not really doing that well um, only a couple of feet tall I'd expect them to be well caught up to the black crim certainly there's one which is about three foot all developing fruit all with the Guernsey Island stripe on you can see I've been doing tomato cares look at my fingers yeah all with the the stripes of the Guernsey Island tomato which may not necessarily be the Guernsey tomato but hey ho then a real mixed bag here I don't know what these are these went in earlier some are forming fruits some aren't and these are the ones that went in earlier and you can see these and the bed behind are so spindly compared to what we normally have I mean just I mean if I come over here these are sort of just twigs look no fruit de developing on there yet I'm convinced that let me see if I can find some I'm convinced that like here these aren't developing into fruit and these were flowering during the heat wave and I think the heat wave just really um, wasn't good for the pollination of these I should have come and sprayed them with water but I didn't so yeah I mean it's a better year for tomato so far than last year because of tomato blight oh and most of these they're red Cherokee um, sorry red ox heart so really quite robust plants but not doing anything so amazingly spindly anyway lots of weeding to do and now I come over here and as we were seeing the other day you see in there loads of cucumbers cucumbers cucumber huge one in there that will be a curry that one look how big that one is and finally I'll be taking that off today that's a bit too big that courgette but this is beginning to produce really well and let me see in there look at the flowers that are coming on there now so really pleased with that yeah and there was a squash in here wasn't there oh there it'll be interesting to see if that homestead Oregon sweet meat comes to anything but yeah 
looking at the tomatoes. It's my tomato cares bucket. What a spindly lot of plants we've got this year, apart from the black crim. And some of the others are looking a bit better, but these just look so, considering these were planted earlier out than the others, they just really are nothing. But hey ho, that's allotmenteering for you. You win some, you lose some. Sometimes you lose a lot, sometimes you win a lot. I'm not talking about dog food. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Good day on what is rather a breezy and grey Sunday morning. I'm really glad I got the tomato cares done yesterday because I think with the gusts of the breeze that we're getting, if I hadn't done that, some of them would have snapped and, and broken. So I'm glad I got on top of that yesterday or most of the tomato cares yesterday, certainly. And this morning I've been harvesting. So I've harvested two types of beetroot. One is a Burpees Golden, which was the first one. And then two Cylindra beetroot, they look like, though the seed that we sowed is a bog standard red Italian beetroot. Though the two that I did harvest look like a Cylindra beetroot. And then some of our Colleen new potatoes, which you can see in front of us here now in that bed. I'll be harvesting the rest of the bed, I think, this week and putting them into storage. So, and then, of course, we've got some beans coming. So you can see it's not quite a wall of beans this year. The beans are not doing fabulously at the moment. They're doing OK and they're giving us harvests, which, of course, is is what we want. But usually by this time of year if I've got a bean run like that it's completely covered in leaf and literally is um, has a likelihood of being knocked over by strong gusts of wind because the leaves sort of act as a sail and the whole thing can come down but I don't think we're in for that this year because the bean growth has been quite spartan but we're getting harvest and that's the good thing and then I've got an overgrown cucumber, which we saw yesterday, I think, or the day before. And I'm going to be roasting that, de-seeding that and roasting that. And we're going to have that with a cheese sauce this evening. So, yeah, and all the rest of the, the veg, the potatoes, the beetroot and the beans will all be steamed. So that will be rather a lovely supper, I think. Oh, was that a spot of rain I felt then? I think that may be a spot of rain. I don't think we're going to get much rain. I mean, it does look as though we're going to get rain, but I think it will literally be Spartan spots of rain that we see. Anyway, one thing I did just want to show you was, or is rather, a video of a little hedgehog I took the other day. It was out in the daytime whilst I was watering. If you see a hedgehog out in the daytime, do sort of follow it for a while because they're nocturnal animals, so don't normally come out in the daytime unless they're looking for 
food or water and I think this one was looking for water because from where we've just seen it it then crossed the path it found the four week old upturned compost bin lid pond had a drink so I think my thought about the above ground washing up bowl pond being um, having a hedgehog in it that displaced the water I think that may have been correct earlier in the week it then went across the path around the chickens down our neighbor's plot then back onto the path between our plots and then this blue bin here it went at the side of the blue bin and towards the back of the plot at the side of the polytunnel and as you know we you know we do garden very much with a, a mind to wildlife here and our plot neighbors do in fact most people do um, but our plot neighbors definitely do and the next plot neighbors above and the next one over there so I think they must feel quite happy around here and um, yeah the um, I did see a family of hedgehogs in our pallet compost bin earlier in the year and I've just I have put things on top of the compost bin but I haven't actually disturbed it so it's either in the compost bin I think or around the back of our neighbor's shed or in our dead hedge at the back but that was just lovely to see anyway I'm going to leave it there for this week's a week at the plot I shall see you for another upload on YouTube in a week's time and I'll see you through the week on planet vegetaria if you watch there and if you watch on both, fabulous. It's still quite bright though, still quite bright. Grey skies, but quite bright. I hope you will have been able to hear me in the breeze that has been going on. And I'll just uh, leave you with a shot back to where we were looking a moment ago. Bye.